welcome back to the channel. My name's James. Today, what we're gonna be doing is really fun creme de month bit of work. We're gonna be getting our basin installed, the vanity unit in. We're gonna be doing the inch and a quarter waist and the hot and cold 15 millimeter copper feeds. Up to this, I'm gonna show you how to do the basin waist and at the end, it should look absolutely beautiful. Remember, all the tools that I use in this video, you can find in our Amazon store, links below. Also, you can now follow us over on our Reddit page and also on TikTok as well. Anyway, let's get on with the video guys and remember to hold tight. Let's do this. So if you guys have watched any of the previous videos in this bathroom series, then you know exactly where we are at this stage. If you haven't, I'll leave a link to the whole playlist below and you can go back and watch it at your pleasure. What I'm gonna do for this, because my basin that is gonna be sitting on top of this is so shallow, I can do a little bit of work now to the basin itself to make this job easier. So part one is preparing the basin. <laughs> So, uh, good idea, if you've got one of these laying about, an old yoga mat, let's say your missus used to do yoga for about a week after Christmas, and now she doesn't use it anymore. You can get a tap on now on this basin, you can also get the waist on, and I'll give you some lovely close-ups as well, so you can enjoy every second of it. Oh, <laughs> baby! So, for the waist here, this is quite unusual actually, we've got a plastic waist going in, standard click-clack one, that's what we call that, click-clack. So we've got our plastic waist here. Now we've got a small rubber washer that goes under here. Then, look, this hole here, this hole that you can see on here, that needs to line up with the overflow hole in the back of the basin, and I'll be showing you that in a minute. Then if you think of my fingers as actually the basin itself, then our rubber washer over that, then a slip washer that will go on the back of that, and then the nut itself, and that will all do up like that. So let's get that on now. So it might help you as well to know, using a little mark on the top or something, or a little mark on the bottom, just a felt tip pen, only mark the top if you've still got the decorative kind of plastic on it, just to know exactly which way these vent points are facing so they line up in a minute with that. I'll be able to do it just by remembering because I've got a brain. So the first thing we'll do is we'll get our waist, and I am actually gonna pop a little mark on this, so I know that's facing the right way now. Just make sure that's facing that direction. At this point, you can do one of two things. You can use a clear silicon to pop around here. You know, I do that sometimes, it's up to you. I prefer to use Plumber's Mate because I've always got it in the van. But if you're a DIY, you're probably not gonna have a whole type of Plumber's Mate lying around. So just use yourself a nice little bit of silicon. For some reason, I don't know why, but clear silicon always feels like it's better at this than white silicon. But for those pro plumbers out there, Let's get some Plumber's Mate on. So a Plumber's Mate, in the summer, put it in the fridge, all right? Because you're not gonna be able to use it. Uh, in the winter, what you wanna do is scoop out a bit and get it in your hands and roll it into a sausage. Ebony! I need your girl right now, Bob. I want you to come up here and film me doing some lovely plumbing, baby. Here we is. Plumber's Mate on your ass, Emily. <laughs> the thing about Plumber's Mate that I like, and the reason I prefer it over silicon, is it never sets. And that means that if there's a problem, you can go back to it. It does mean it, you know, I mean, this is warmed up quite nicely already. Uh, so I'm just gonna pop that on my leg, that bit there. Because if you get it in your, on your hands for too long, it's really hard to, kind of get it off, get it on like that, sit it on my leg so it's out of the way. I know that I've got this the right way around. I can now bring this to where I want it. I'm just pushing that through with my hands. Get a nice little close up on this, Emily, my little darling. So we get the plumber's mate, roll it into a sausage, a saucisson, as they would say in the uh, country known as France. And then we just lay the saucisson. We pull that through, it's a little bit of a faff. You lay the sausage on there, you run it round. like that okay and then you can just form it in the gap a little bit if you like you see the reason we use this is because it goes right into the thread and most of this once we're finished we will pull off and put back in the tub so it's very low waste as well which is obviously really important these days well yeah bang me but i'm just going to use the rubber of this now we put the slip collar on you don't have to go mad tight just especially when this is on a plastic nut. That there will be fine. And then whatever we've got left, put that off so it's nice and neat. Put that back in our tub. Now I'm ready to put the trap on. I am using a bottle trap here. Um, the reason I like to use a bottle trap is because they tend to come with this little air admittance valve on it. And when you've got inch and a quarter pipe work and there's a bit of a drop and then there's, 
you know, a fair way off to the leg. In fact, it doesn't matter what kind of pipe work it is. I just recommend you try and put air admittance valves on every waistline that you've got in your property. So you've got a little rubber O-ring on here and literally just push it on. You can get this on now. Nice close up of this, please, dear. So then you get your rubber on there like that and you just push push that on like that and you see that well that is definitely going to seal bring that roughly round to where we want it so it's going to point towards the back and there we go that's ready to go on just have a look at the compression on this so our pipe is going to go around this as you can see we've got a little taper there in a minute when we put the pipe work on we've got a rubber washer with the same size taper that goes in that yet again a slip ring all that allows us to do is tighten this nut up without it getting clagged up on this rubber washer here that would sit there like that yeah and then the ring goes over the top but we'll redo that in a minute guys when we come to put it on properly <laughs> Now it's time to put the tap on. Right, uh, we didn't buy the best tap ever. This is from Homebase, all right? Uh, I slightly cocked up by the fact that I thought I'd got an Armitage Shanks tap laying at the studio. Uh, it turns out I've given it to someone. I don't know where it is, it's gone. Regardless of that, how to fit a basin mixer tap? Very easy, here we go. Most times you're gonna get a little gubbins pack that looks just like that. That is the technical term for it. That is gonna have one or two threaded rods like this, depending on the size. Now on this one here, we've got one threaded rod that goes in. One end of the thread is gonna have either a cross or a slot in it. That is the end you wanna see once you've put it in. So you're gonna pop it in there like that, and then in a minute we'll just nip that up. Take off this nut. And then we've got our two threaded hoses. Look at that, there's a little bit of tape on them. That's a red bit of tape. Uh, the hot is on this side. It always is in the UK. There's a rubber O-ring on this. So these don't seal on tightness. So if you over tighten them, they're likely to fail. So all you need to do is just pop them in and I'll show you how far I tighten this one up. In fact, you're probably gonna feel the O-ring go in and go slightly tight. So I'm just gonna go up like that. I think the O-ring's already through its sheath. And then look, let's just stop there. And that is literally it. I'm not gonna tighten that anymore. I'm not gonna get a set of grips or anything like that in there. Once you've got these two on, you're gonna say, wow, if they're together, sometimes that's hard to get through the hole. That's why we put them like that. We stagger them. And then we can go through one, then the other, and then hey presto, that is on. Then after that, we've got a protective rubber sort of half moon jobby. The same size bit that is brass. This is forming the clamp. This is where I know I'm gonna to have to go to the van and get my hand tools out. I've got this far without even using any of my hand tools. By the way, all the hand tools that I use in this video, you can buy on the Amazon store. Right, so look, we feed one through, then we feed the other through. We feed all of this slot in like that. Now I'm going to try and make sure that the tap head is roughly the right way around. The rubber one on first. Then we get the holding nut. Just imagine that I've tightened this thread up already, guys. Usually I'd use some of my homemade tools for this bit, but they're in the van. I'm not going to the van yet. I'm going to have to go, I know I am, but I'm not gonna go just yet. I'm gonna leave it for as long as I possibly can. Just nip this up. Usually I'd use, like I said, my special tools, because I don't really wanna gnash this brass nut up, but I'm good enough not to do that. You know, I've got the skill. Right, there we go, that's now ready. So if you look from the underside, that's what we've got now. I right now should be able to lay this on top of our vanity. And that's it, job's done. Thanks for watching Plumber Parts today. See you later. Of course not. You were gonna press stop recording now, weren't you? So now we move on to the next stage, a stage which means Emily can put the camera down because her arms are getting tired. Let's move on. The next stage is fitting the vanity unit to the wall, making sure it's nice and level because the floor might be out, the wall might be out. Uh, it's not actually in this case, so we're just gonna fit it back nicely. Uh, and then we'll get the waste done and the hot and cold done as well. And then that's it. I can then use the bidet here and wash my hands at the same time. Hell yeah, baby. Right, so first thing I'm gonna do is we're just gonna have a little, we're just gonna take this off now out of the way. You know that's gonna be good. Yeah. So the first thing I did was pop the handles on just so it was easier to move the vanity unit around and work with the shelves as well. Right, so first up, I'm just gonna mark the center of this. So that is the center there of that. And sometimes I just like to check as well. Just measure both ways just to make sure. Uh, and lovely. 
Right, we can now just shuffle this slightly out of the way. Probably quite hard for you to see, but the center there is, is the actual center here that we want for this. Now, I've got myself a very sexy, swanky, brand new spirit level. Woohoo, baby! Look at that, it's absolutely virgin, this is. It's got a digital display on it and everything, light up display. So when I lay it on here, look, it's actually slightly on the wee wees this is at the moment. And it's saying this end wants to go down, that end wants to go up. Hold on, let me just... That is so precise. All right, so have a look at this. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get that so it's lined up. That is seriously cool. Cool. Right, so there's our level for that. Now I can match this line up here with that line there. That is where our centre is going to be. Lovely. Right, so now I want to get it level. Right, so I can just switch this on. And look, we are almost there already. If I lifted this up by just a tiny bit, look at that. I mean, that is spot on. Such a small amount. I'm pretty happy with that. So front to back, I know that we're going to have a bit of an issue here. So that is out quite a long way. So now what I've got to do, I can see that it's not quite going down to the bottom at the back. So we've got a gap there. So we've effectively got to push the bottom in, make sure that this is still touching the top and that should make it come level. <laughs> <How about that? laughs> see that? Obviously what's going to happen is we're then going to mark across the top where we want to join this put some screws into the wall and then along the bottom we'll pop a little bit of packing but also we'll make a nice base for that with a bit of silicon as well. It's amazing what a bit of tapping can do. Hey, I'm very lucky here guys because I managed to find the studs. Usually what you'd have to do because we're going into a plasterboard wall here is use some proper plasterboard fixings for this and also a little bit of glue. But as I'm going straight into the studs, there's literally no way this is ever going to come off the wall or even drop down. So what I might do is not use any packing on the bottom bits at the back and just seal up the floor gap with a little bit of gap filler and then make that good with some silicon once I'm finishing off the bathroom in a future video. Now's as probably a good a time as any for me to tell you about the Ale Army. So you want to become an Ale Army member and you obviously want to join us for a beer or two as well. And what do we do on the Ale Army live stream? Well, firstly, we share a beer together. You'll also get sneak peeks of next week's video. You'll get to choose the song that I sing at the end of that video. Do you want me to do some drum and bass? Because we can do drum and bass if you want if I'm singing one. We talk about disasters photos and plum proud photos that I've been sent in. You can pitch me your video ideas. You can ask me plumbing questions and non-plumbing questions if you want. But above all, we're there to have a chat, get to know each other. The Ale Army is a real community. This is how it works. There's three levels. One is just a tip to say thank you. I've helped you out in the past on a video. I've saved your marriage. And you want to swing me a small amount of cash, $1.99, to say thanks. Thank you. Level two is Ale Army live streams. Live streams with me every Thursday or Saturday depending on my schedule. They're really good fun. Level three is Ale Army live streams plus behind the scenes content. You get to see photos of stuff that we're doing on site or in the studio. You get on the job videos, behind the scenes videos, scripts and song notes plus other random goodies as well. All of the levels will allow you to flex your spanner rank on the plumber parts comment section on all of our published videos and get this guys your spanner rank changes the longer you've been with us so you go up in ranks like one spanner to spanners crossed stuff like that you'll see them in the comments also you'll be able to use our special plumbing emojis as well in the comments and live chat too so there's loads of perks so bang out an ale army or a whole tie or hashtag f the agenda and only current ale army members will get that joke so in the comments of plumber parts videos you can stand out from the crowd so if you've got time to spare a little bit of cash to spare each month and above all most importantly a few beers or a tipple of your choice why not join us on parade at the Ale Army? I'll be seeing you in the next Ale Army live stream. Hold tight. Now you know why I put valves in at the very first pretty much video of this whole job, putting valves in. And we've got two hot water valves here because we have a secondary return on this system. But that is it now. The tank is up in the loft. That means we don't have to drain anything else out. It's off, off and off. Right, now we bring the Beerson back in. Let's just pop it down there. Make sure that's nice and central. And now we can get under here, pull this out, which is irritatingly in the way for this bit, but there we go. So we can pull this out. 
you'll see the tops of one of our pipes here. Now I've opened up the other taps in the house and we're just gonna let that water out. I'm gonna make sure that both of my hoses reach past the pipe and both of these do, which means actually I've got very little plumbing to actually do here. So if you look here, you'll see that goes past that pipe and the other one here, that pretty much touches it, but we're gonna have a valve on there, so that should be fine. So I'm gonna cut both of these back just so they're at the same height. Wicked, so I'm happy about that. That's, that's made my life a lot easier, actually. This has turned into one of the easiest basin installs ever. It's almost like I first fixed it and made sure that everything was gonna be all right. Go have a bit of fun, aren't you? So many, so many serious people out there at the moment. Um, right, let's whip this off again. Right, so this one can just push on straight like that. We'll pop some jointing compound on there in a sec. Uh, we're just gonna cut this other one back. Definitely needs to give these a bit of a WD-40, I think. I got them soaked last week, so. So I am lucky here because I've left my copper stubs high enough. So easy peasy really. Bit of potable jointing compound on each one of those compression fittings. And pop that on, nip them up, and we're pretty much done on the hot and cold. Right, so now that's done. Boom, we get the water back on. Now, you've probably noticed as well, I'm just gonna crack these open, okay? We want the slow building of pressure. Nothing more than that. The reason I turn my water on nice and slowly is because now look, I've got the hot and cold tap there running. I know now that water's reached that point. Now I can just feel around my joints in here and just make sure that they're okay now, you know? Now I can turn this water off and slowly start to build pressure. I can even test with the beater if I like. I'm gonna get a wet leg. Anyway, let's feel around here, make sure that they're okay. Good stuff. Sometimes I'll even just crack these valves a little bit open just to let any air out. There we go, you've got water there and water there. Lovely. Right, so now onto a lovely stage. We're just gonna glue, gonna run a little bit of glue. And you don't need loads. This is, you know, it's not like going crazy. Yeah, as you can see there. And we're just gonna run our glue very, very nice and easily. Like I say, just a smallish bead, quite a flat bead, if you can. Excellent. Right, setting, we just want to make sure that's nice and central on there. Now I just need to connect up my hot and my cold and also get the waste in. First thing I did was whipped out the bottle trap just to make life easier and actually so you guys could see it. For some reason I just could not get the drawer out of the way. But this is a really simple bit now because of the prep work that we've done made it really really easy we can just pop on each one of those connections there's no kink in the flexible hose and all we need to do is just pop each one of them on they've got a rubber seal on them they just need a quarter turn nip up with an adjustable spanner just to make sure they're nice and tight but not overly tight and then that's it we can turn the water on there just to make sure everything's okay and move on to getting the waste done they're now both on right now we can get our waste in so it's gonna be hard for you to see this but Right, so I know you can't see it very well, but right here is a little pipe that we're going onto, okay? So the first thing I'd say is solvent weld, especially this sort of thing, is cheap. Leaks, guess what? They're expensive. We don't want this to leak, so I'm gonna go on the inside as well. We're gonna make sure we get a really good seal on this. And then once we've got the fitting on, we're just gonna twist it, make sure it gets a really, really good seal on there. Right, now we can pop our bottle trap back on. Pop that on lightly, just push that in. It doesn't need to be done up ridiculously tight. It just needs to be roughly in the right direction. Now I'm gonna put a nice swept elbow on this. And I'm just gonna marry that up almost so it's in it. And then I'll know exactly where to cut my pipe for that. a sliver off that. Get 
some on air as well. Just run it round like that and then also just get a little bit, pop it inside the fitting as well. Just make sure you've got plenty of it there. Make sure the window's open as well. Otherwise, suddenly it's gonna feel like you're at Glastonbury. The year I went and saw Blur, they played a whole set. And also REM played a nice set as well. Uh, and I saw the doors as well, I seem to remember. Right, so the last bit I'm not actually gonna quite put in just until we're ready. So, that'll be this in there nicely now. It's all a little bit just measury yuppy. And then we'll just do a dry run, just like I did a minute ago. We don't need to glue this just yet, do we? Not swing around, that's perfect. I'm, happy to, I'm now happy, you see, now that I've seen that, I'm happy to glue that up. Just want to say again, you can use more solvent weld than you need. You can wipe it off at the end. Just make sure you don't get loads inside the pipe for obvious reasons. Uh, and also you probably noticed that I've built up the compression fitting already, like I described earlier in the video, with the trap on like that. And don't worry, that little wiggle there is to get the glue going round. In a few minutes time, I'll run a bit of blue roll around that joint and clean it off. Oh, I should be able to turn some water on now. There you go, a bit of water. And there's the bottle trap filling up. Right, let's make sure it gets nice and hot. Lovely. And nice and cold. Very nice. All together now. Now let's test. Now an important thing to do is test the overflow by filling this right up and making sure that everything runs out of that overflow when the water gets up to that level. So then guys, there we go, all done. Look, lovely, beautiful install. Got a few little bits of bobs still to do on this job. I've got to run a bit of mastic up the sides there and round the other side. But what I'm gonna do at the end of this whole series is a big bit on all those little bits and bobs that I should do. So please hit the subscribe button. If you wanna become a member of the Ale Army, we've got some great giveaways coming up and deals on the Ale Army. So click the join button below where we do a live stream every Thursday evening at 6.30. Have an hour's beer and chit chat with me. If not, I'll see you in the next video, guys. Have a great time. And remember to hold tight. See you soon. WhatsApp's probably gonna be the place as well that I'll share all the behind the scenes stuff. So what I'll probably do over the next few days, some of you this will probably matter to, some, probably most of you this won't matter, because most of you are behind the scenes members already. Um, but we'll keep the 